welcome to my channel. So today we're talking about teaching SAT prep math. So I taught SAT prep for four years. It was kind of thrown at me. Um, and I wanted to talk about what that looked like and how I actually did that. How did my computer turn on behind me without me touching anything? So I wanted to make sure that I did this video now. I've actually been wanting to do this video for like over a year. It's just taking me that long to get to it. And now that we're going into this new school year, I'm no longer teaching SAT prep math. So I wanted to make sure and get out what I remember before I forget. So SAT prep math came about as a course in my school because SAT prep was offered as part of the after school program, which is how it was when I was in school too. But the students that wanted to take it wouldn't show up because those are the same students that are involved in all the activities and the clubs and the sports. So oftentimes it was empty and they were kind of lamenting about how if it were during the day they would be able to attend. So my school decided to turn it into a course. So SAT prep was split up into two separate courses. One was for reading that was taught by an ELA teacher and then the other one was math which has been taught by myself. So the way that it's set up is it's one period and students alternate between reading and math. So on day ones, they're in math, day twos, they're in reading, and then they switch and vice versa. So throughout the full year that students are taking SAT prep, they're getting um, one semester of each and it counts as half of an elective credit for each. So essentially the whole class is just reviewing math topics. That's all we did. I didn't actually get to like teach anything that was new. It was just reviewing. What I was teaching was this is the weird stuff that they ask you on the SAT instead of asking straightforward questions. But I think we're all kind of used to hearing the statement that it's not really about what you know, it's about how well you can take a test. So math gets broken down into four categories and I should have looked up their exact names before sitting down to film, but I didn't. The first one was called Heart of Algebra, and that accounts for about a third of the math section. And it's just all your algebra stuff. It's actually pretty basic. And then the second category was about data and problem solving and ratios and proportions are thrown in there too. So that stuff is usually pretty simple as well. And then you have um, Passport to Advanced Mathematics as the next category, and a lot of that is more like Algebra 2 stuff. And then the last category was Additional Topics, which was where your geometry gets thrown in, and that's about 10% of the test. So to teach this course, I would take those four topics and use them to make up my units. So there's a book, I'm going to have it linked below, that I highly, highly recommend. I love this book. The first year I did not have it. The last three years I did, and the last three years have gone much, much smoother. I don't remember the exact title. I don't have the book with me because so it's at school, but it's like College Panda something or other. And there's a reading one, there's a math one. The math one has all of the topics that come up on the math SAT, but they're in a pretty weird order. Like I'm sure the order makes sense for something, but because I wanted to go along in the order of these categories, especially just thinking about when students were going to take the test, I wanted to make sure we got all that algebra stuff done at the beginning. I resequenced all the topics so that they fit into those categories. And then I just went from what seemed easiest to what seemed hardest and how things seemed to build on each other and just considered where they fall in the standard curriculum anyway. So typically by the end of the first semester, we got through the first two categories. And then in the last semester, we'd get through the, uh, the other two categories. And then we'd start doing like just test prep stuff. And also by the end, the kids are kind of starting to check out because they've taken their test in March, May, or even June. That's a whole other topic I'm gonna save for the end. In the first year, I tried to give like an actual test, like a normal test where if we had spent so much time going over the algebra stuff, and actually I should mention that, um, all of these categories I broke down into two units. So I had eight units total because otherwise we're talking about spending an entire marking period or a whole quarter of the year on one unit. So after breaking down into those units, I would try to test the first year I did this and just test based on what we did and it was okay but what I felt students were more likely to benefit from was just taking a practice SAT which is what I started to do and there are so many that are available for free from College Board that you can give to your students 
So it's sections three and four are for math. And section three, if I remember correctly, was like 25 minutes. And then section four was 55. So when we were testing, I would split it up over two class days, which because we met every other week meant like a full week of class was devoted to the test. So what I did was in one class, we'd have all of section three and then 10 minutes of section four because our classes are 42 minutes long. And then when students came in for their next class, they would have the entire period to finish section four. And then the tests on College Board make it very easy for you to grade it, like if it were the actual SAT, so they're getting a score between 200 and 800. Now this is where I'm gonna start sharing my very honest opinion of all of this. Um, this is actually my second time filming this video because I spent so much time in the first video just complaining about all of this. But I really strongly believe that SAT prep should not be a course. I have no problem with helping students get ready for a test during the day. I have no problem with it being like something that's scheduled to happen. Um, what I do have a problem with though is trying to grade students based on the SAT. I cannot put on the report card a grade from 200 to 800. Not only is the comparison off, but just considering that this is only an elective, it weighs just the same as any other grade on a student's report card. So it's kind of hard to give them a not so good grade because the questions are way hard and they did not so good. In the four years that I taught SAT prep, I only had one student that if I were to grade my students just very exactly on how they did, only that one student would have ever done well. I had to use a very generous curve when grading students. So for all four years that I taught SAT prep, I've argued that the course should be pass fail. It should not be for a grade. I always got pushback from guidance though that if it didn't count for a grade, students would not be motivated to participate as they're supposed to. Putting the validity and usefulness of the SAT aside in that whole testing conversation, if students are not there to do well for a test and if that's not enough to motivate them, I don't think a grade's gonna motivate them either. Guidance finally decided that they would make the course pass fail in the future um, for this school year that's coming up 2020 2021 except now our department chair is retired and the decision was made to not rehire her position so we're losing a math teacher which means cuts which means we're not teaching SAT prep this year and honestly I'm really relieved about it this video is taking a negative turn and I don't mean it to it's just very honestly I don't like the idea of having a course for the SAT. I don't think it makes sense. I think there's other ways, more efficient ways that we could have students prepare for the SAT, which I now have to look into because we don't have the course anymore. Also, we have to see when they're even going to give the SAT again. So many unknowns up in the air, but I just wanted to go through and talk about all this anyway, just in case it's actually helpful to someone. So in general, I found that students weren't really motivated for this course at all, regardless of what was going on with grades. Somehow I'd have students in the class that were not intending to take the SAT, whether they were going to community college or going into the military. I'm not really sure why they enrolled other than to keep their options open, but a lot of the time they would tell me, well, I don't need this class anyway. I'm not taking the SAT. Don't know why they were there. Um, and then the other thing was because the class is going all year long and students have to stay in the class the whole time, they can't just like leave whenever they want. I had students that would take the SAT in March or May and then check out from that point until the end of June. So that was kind of frustrating too. It would have definitely made things easier and allowed me to focus on kids that really needed me if those kids were allowed to go into a study hall instead. So I kind of wish that we had something figured out where students could audit the course. And then the last thing was this last spring doing distance teaching with SAT prep was honestly just kind of lame. It was not the best. I just did what I could, which was using Khan Academy. I used Khan Academy for my other classes and it was like you could find a set of videos to assign to students with practice and all this stuff. And then SAT prep was totally different. It wasn't like I could just say, here guys, watch these videos, unless I searched for the video specifically. Um, and I couldn't assign them specific practice and see how they did. It was more like 
um, they would have to log in and Khan Academy assigned them practice. And I think I got to see like overall how they did and it would kind of give me a report about what they were struggling with, but really not information that was helpful to me to be able to help my students. So I ended up just saying to my students for their assignment, set a timer and go on Khan Academy and practice for a while because I didn't really know what else to do with that class. Um, and then grades were just based on whether or not they did it and it was purely effort. There really was no way for me to figure out how to teach SAT prep remotely. So those are my thoughts on SAT prep. Um, the book that I mentioned before is linked down below. I loved this book for teaching SAT prep. I didn't even really talk about it, but it has explanations of the topic and then practice questions. This was probably obvious, but anyway, just so you know. Um, and as always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.